Hello again. Um, if you stayed for the last talk, you know I'm Joseph Stannard, Deputy Editor of The Wire magazine. Uh, we're here at Le Guess Who, and from Jerusalem in my heart, we've got Radwan Ghazi Munne. Uh, hi. Hi. Round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, Radwan's, uh, you performed here live on Thursday. Yes, Thursday. You're also a curator, so you've actually chosen the, uh, many of the acts that you've no doubt been enjoying over the last few days. Um, and I guess, really, first of all, though, I'd like to talk about the project, Jerusalem in My Heart. Um, now, you started out as a, I believe, a, an audiovisual kind of project, a kind of performance project. Is that... Correct. Um, yeah, I mean that gets that gets uh, cited often, but mm. there's never really been a form for the project, and even the form that it has now, it's only in the current form of it. And right. yeah, it's there's going to be a very different version of it happening in December for oh. uh, for recording for the next round of stuff coming up next year. Okay, so does that kind of evolution as a project, presumably that will affect the live and the recording uh, process? For uh, well, it's always like, um, it's a pro I, you know, it's not a band. It's mm. a, definitely a project because it just like, um, I view it as extension of what whatever Charles, uh, Charles André, Charles, uh, my partner and I are, are, are wanting to do in the moment. Mm. And for the last two years, it's been this. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's always like, just we keep, as we're working together, collecting ideas for the next thing that's coming up, and um, mm. it's you know ever evolving. Mm. Yeah. Now I believe again, for you uh, you have a background in hardcore punk. Essentially, I, I played in quite a few punk bands. You're in Cursed. I was in Cursed. Yeah. So I, I was a fan of as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I was in that band, but it wasn't. I was just playing because they were my friends. So it wasn't really music that you know <laughs> wasn't part of my world so much. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Mm. Really, really good guys and awesome band and beautiful memories with those people. How did you make the transition essentially from being a kind of band musician mm. to establishing something that maybe had a little bit more, was perhaps a little bit more open-ended and a bit more changeable? Yeah. Well, the band thing, I mean, Truth From My Heart actually, technically I started it quite a long time ago as like the sort of vague idea that I wanted to do and mm. did actually performances before I played with Cursed. Mm. Um, so that was around doing things, odd odd shows here and there, mm. little performances. And um, yeah, I mean, like they're, they're not mutually exclusive. They can both coexist to me. Uh, you know, music is music and art is art. And it's you know, no, nobody, you don't need to follow one discipline. And if you do, it doesn't mean that you can't jump out of that discipline, mm. you know, sometimes. So yeah. am, am I talking really far away from the mic? Yeah, I'll, I'll get closer. <laughs> Give you a little Depends less of we, a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, so with the... Um, I mentioned kind of like the background in playing in bands mm -hmm. and kind of with a kind of more of a rock, I guess, sure. orientation. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what, what I kind of want to know is, was the audiovisual um, aspect of the current project, was that... Do you have a background in that as well? Well, I'm, I mean, for, for me, before I got into music production and all that, um, cinema has always been my passion. I actually like that more than I like music. Right. Um, and um, for me, this was, I, I didn't follow that path. Mm. Uh, I followed the path of music. Um, but uh, for me, having this element to be part of the performance, part of the project is very important. We spent a lot of time on that, on that part. Mm. All the films that we use in the project, none of it is found footage. It's all 100% filmed, processed, and edited by Charles. Right. Um, stuff we talk about, what we're going to shoot on travels and on tours and stuff. And, you know, he always has his Bolex camera and always filming. Mm. So um, a lot of that, it's, it's really like, in a weird way, we like direct these mini movies, these mm. mini films, and uh, the, the performance is a the the the, the, the cumulative uh, effect of these four to five 16 millimeter projectors mm. and one 35 millimeter slide projector currently, mm -hmm. and it's uh, yeah, it's it's basically a, a overtaking of a space, overtaking of of uh, of, of of the light in a space, mm. and uh, turning yeah a venue into into. Um, yeah, into an experience. And usually we, we have multiple screens. Unfortunately, on Thursday, the setup technically was made it impossible for us to hang our screens because they couldn't lower down the uh, the rig for some technical reason, right. which was a real bummer because it was that's not the show is not one screen with multiple images. It's multiple screens on multiple images. It's really mm. a uh, decoupage, mm. uh, like a 
it just it's, it's, yeah, it's an explosion of images and an image can be on two screens mm-hmm. and we play with focus depth and right. space and uh, yeah there's like no lighting in the uh, in the venue zero lighting mm. uh, which is often a problem actually but uh, it's it's yeah it's absolutely like it's like a cinema you're watching a film and it's nonstop it's just you know there's 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 a very vague narrative to it beginning middle and an end yeah. Um, so yeah we try to present it like that like you come and you watch and it's an experience it's not it's mm. not a not a rock show or, yeah yeah I mean you mentioned the um on this occasion, there were some challenges involved and in you had to kind of reconfigure your setup, essentially. Yeah, well, that's part of also, a big part of the, the project is that you um, arrive at a space, uh, at, the, at the, 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 the economics of it are is that we can never perform where we want to perform, mm. of course. Um, so we, 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 part of the challenge is you arrive in a room, you arrive in a space, and you are given this blank canvas that's all crooked and crazy and weird. Mm. And it's just like, well, make something... Uh, engaging and interesting to an audience mm. with what you have. Uh, we sometimes cannot even put up any screens. Like mm. the, the the show that we did the night before, the Guess Who show, we could not. We were in a big art gallery and we just had to use white walls. And right. that was fine. You yeah. know? And there's other places where there's just a black wall behind you and you really have to get creative with what you're doing with the screens. Mm. Um, so yeah, we have we have all of our screens with us. We carry them around and it's always like an interesting, you know, creative mm. challenge. Of course, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say, because um, did the adaptability come first or did the mm. having to rise to certain spatial challenges kind of facilitate the adaptability, if you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's actually a very good question. No, it's actually the idea of it was that we will walk into a space and we will we'll give them a minimal technical sort of requirements that we need to make the show happen. Mm. And from there, we're... Um, yeah, we, we we will we will overtake the space, and it's it's yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm just thinking in French. I'm sorry. It's a. Uh, you're manipulating the space to make it fit what you want mm. to show, and what we show changes depending on the space. It can never mm. be the same show because we're using a space. And yeah. the only time it kind of resembles itself is when it's on one big flat screen, and that's mm. that's uh, and, and that works great too. All mm. actually, what would be the ideal location? For you, well, an ideal location would make it not ideal because the whole <laughs> purpose of it is like that 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 this ever evolving, you know, this this morphing thing that changes all the time. So it's mm. it's we can't. I mean, we can't even think. Every time we do a show uh, in Montreal, where we're based uh, based in, we always try to find a new venue to present the show. Um, we're running out of venues, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we always try to do it in different venues, and you know show to show it's always been just so drastically different mm, yeah. mm. do you often do you find any resistance with some venues to being taken over in this oh my god way? yes oh, really yeah we get some knuckleheads sometimes <laughs> we're like idiots who just like why did you book this why are we here when mm. people are just like you're in the way of the audience mm. you know you have to move your projectors and we're like you're you're an idiot. This is why did you even book this? <laughs> oh. It's like it's it's really annoying. It's so frustrating to deal with that, but yeah. it, it rarely happens. It happens more in uh, in in Canada, right? Um, in Europe, rarely. I think people here have much more uh, much more of an open idea of what what art is than in mm. uh, uh, in, in in Canada. Sadly, do you think that's because, or at least a, a part of this, is because whenever there's a booking made the easiest thing to assume you're going to get is a kind of four square band kind of set up with a backdrop. You know, and, yeah. yeah, well, we count on our, you know, our, our, our management and booking to mm. sort of relay the information, but often you're also, you know, you kind of have to accept what's, you know, in mm. front of you because otherwise just the economics of it don't work. It, of it's, it's not feasible. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's, it's uh, sadly, I'm sorry to say this, but it's usually the UK that's the problem. Uh. <laughs> For, for, I think she follows a bit of a North American model. I, I think I, some of us can relate to that yeah, anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it's like a dirty stage, sticky floor, and yeah. just like just an environment that. that but even in the, we don't really play very often in the UK, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and the, the couple of times we've played, it's been great. It's been yeah. it's been awesome. But I also tour with a lot of other people, and you know, often see the the, the, the venues. It's just it's a bit. It's not very appealing for my personal taste. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can be a, you know, the some of that in the UK is almost infamous. Uh, you know, certain problems with sound people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, but that's that's a different thing too. Also, mm. you can, it's not fair to sort of just categorize that as that because True. that is the milieu of rock music that has a format and it's, mm. you're there loud, people there to drink, the the, 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 the the economy that exists on the sale of alcohol, the more alcohol mm. you sell, the more the place can exist. So I get it. I get why that's there. Mm. It's just, yeah, it doesn't really fit with what, what, mm. what we do. 
And of course, you're a recording project as well, yeah. uh, which I believe came a little bit later on after the foundation of the mm. project itself. Yeah, quite a bit later. Yeah. Quite I mean, first of all, I'd like to kind of ask why was that important mm. to do? Actually, let's go with that first, actually. Yeah, what, what made you actually sure. want to make records? Well, here's, here's kind of a difficult statement to make. Uh, thankfully, nobody from my record labels here. <laughs> um, the record is a compromise mm. for me of what the show is because mm. the record anchors the, uh, the, the, uh, the performance as this one performance. It's documented and mm. you have it as this, this, this oral reference mm. and the project is not about that you know, the project about being being very like amorphous and you know mm. um so that for me is already a compromise so but arriving to be able to travel and do this and present it to the world uh, can only exist in in the, the the you know the um what's the word the the format that we have how we accept what we agree collectively agree is art, is mm. that it needs to be manufactured into a CD and a vinyl. That's mm. fine. That's, it is what it is. Mm. And uh, I mean, I'm a collector, so I get it. I, yeah. I, I, I fetishize this stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, but it's unfortunate that outside of that, nobody will book something that doesn't exist as a record mm. uh, or that has, you know, some kind of a certain visibility. Mm. Um, and that's, that's, I feel, where, where music lag, like lags like miles behind um, mm. Uh, many of the art milieus, right? It's mm. it's very very much uh, in yesterday's world, not in today's world. Mm. Um, and yeah, so that the compromise was that well, if we want to present this, if this needs to travel and be seen, it has to exist within that format. So that mm. that was a bit of the the, the struggle and the challenge. Mm. So we made the first record and um, we tried and you know succeeded to a certain degree, but not to the degree that I found satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, with and we tried to make the artwork be something that represented somewhat the show. Mm. Um, very difficult to do because, mm. of course, you're representing a, a multiple films. You're representing about 90 films because mm. we have about 90 loops per show. Uh, 90 films with one singular image, mm. like one final packaging. Uh, so that's very, very, it's like very hard to choose. Mm. Um, and then we did the second record and that was also, we tried to think, you know, take that one theme, one idea, and go really deeper into it mm. and uh, manipulate the images in the way we manipulate uh, the show with the, the chemicals that we apply, the chemical treatments. So mm. all the images you see are just uh, intensely chemically treated images. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, if you see the originals and you see what they, they were in the end, it's, it's quite, uh, quite, quite shocking. And it's all, you know, none of it's digital, none of it's done on a computer. Not that that's I, I, don't, I don't take pride in that. I don't mm. care about that. I'm just saying that it's really like a lot of that is, um, uh, in French we say aléatoire. I don't know what in, uh, mm. like a certain randomness to it. It's uh, just, yeah, it just yeah. happens. Oh, aléatoric. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aléatoric. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that, that you, you know, we throw these films and these buckets of chemicals and out comes these images. And we're mm. like, mm, we have 200, let's pick one. And we mm. pick the one we think works the best for the record. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, I think I'm off topic. No, no, it's no, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, we're on track. No, okay, great. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And now, so for the third record, uh, we are digging pretty deep uh, into scary territory for what we're going to do to represent the show um, mm. uh, in a thing, an object that you can have, a mm. tangible physical object. And if we do succeed, I think uh, I'm going to be quite happy. If yeah. it works like how I want it, I think it'll be the closest I can possibly get it. Yeah. If, if we succeed. You mentioned each time kind of attempting to go deeper into the mm -hmm. core of what it is yeah. you do. Um, how do you achieve that greater depth each time? What constitutes mm -hmm. depth? What, what constitutes depth? Well, it depends how you look at it. Depends what discipline of, 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 of music. Let's just talk about music sure. uh, that you come from. Um, unfortunately, the the uh, the cookie factory, you know, uh, internet music world mm. uh, makes it so that things have to be churned out super quick. Yeah, uh, and things have to change. Uh, the idea that someone repeats themselves is frowned upon. Mm. You know, in Europe, the West, uh, it's it's seen as like lack of 
uh, creativity. Mm. Um, if I can talk about uh, Levantine music, music mm. from Lebanon, Syria, mm. Iraq, uh, we have people who, who many other places in the world too, I'll just talk about what I know. Mm. Um, people will spend their entire life working on one thing mm. over and over and over and over. And you are not called, you know, a, a, an artist, let alone master. Mm until you're way well into your 40s, 50s, 60s, like you really have to earn it because yeah. it's, it's the, the, the respect for that uh, discipline is, mm. is there and it's very much, uh, it's very valuable. And it's, 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 not just, it's not just art, it's culture, it's, mm. it's heritage. Um, and that, uh, that sadly doesn't exist in like uh, pop, rock, indie, whatever mm. world. It's not, it's just there's, there's a, a certain like, okay, the lack of attention span means that okay, we're done. That's that's a year and a half old. Mm. We you have to you have to do something different. If you don't mm. do something different, well, then that's that's uninteresting. It means you are lacking creativity. Mm. So the digging deep for me is just like this constant analysis and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and and yeah, you know, applying that or applying you know also like taking uh, cues from visual arts, from cinema, from film. People who are really just constantly take one mm. thing and keep working at it and working at it, working at it until they feel they've gotten somewhere where they can say, okay, this makes me proud. Mm. Uh, and I'm not comparing myself to that because I think we're so far away from that. <laughs> and uh, part of the curation was also presenting people who, in my opinion, have achieved, achieved that status. Mm. Uh, people who I respect dearly and um, yeah, mm. so <laughs> that, that's how you go deeper into it. Right, too. yeah. I mean, you mentioned going into some scary territory with new material, I mean, what what does that kind of uh, well the uh, refer to the record we are working on uh, is a uh, side A of this can be recorded with an Oriental orchestra mm. live uh, in a palace in Lebanon. One uh, four takes, four one takes, mm. basically all live. There's no right. dubs. There's no, and again, I don't give. I don't care about any of that stuff. For me, it's just like the only way to get the idea right is to do it that way. The mm. scary thing of doing it that way. Um, but that record, the record will also be accompanied by film, mm. and the 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 film you will there will be a sixteen millimeter film spool that comes with the record. Mm. Part of the audio will be on the optical track of the film, and uh, it's on the the person who is consuming this to basically assemble what they see and what they hear mm. to their own, you know. Uh, to their own taste or their mm. own whatever randomness to it. That the randomness of it will create that, well, there's no way you're going to experience this thing the same. Uh, you won't experience it twice in the same manner mm. because there's just an element of randomness to it that, that will happen by virtue of it being, you know, you can't synchronize anything. Sure. It's just, it's just two, two, two beasts that just go on their own. <laughs> so it's scary in that yeah. if you fail, you fall pretty hard on your face. <laughs> and so I'm trying really hard not to fall flat on my face with this one. But you have to call it failure because otherwise there's... Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's a failure, it just doesn't exist. That's yeah. it. We don't, we, don't, we, yeah. don't, we don't put it out. <laughs> well, again, talking about the kind of like the recorded output, really, um, I was wondering, and in terms of the... Um, the visual data that kind mm -hmm. of like surrounds it, the visual yeah. information, the aspect of kind of... Um, treating the visuals and also kind of like, the, I guess, the corresponding treatment of the sonics. Mm -hmm. I mean, what does that kind of... I mean, some people would call it um, de uh, the degradation of the material mm -hmm. almost. I mean, what, what function does that serve for you? Um, hmm. I don't know if degradation is the, 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 the word I'd use. So that's not how I look at it that way. To me, sure. it's just... You know, it's uh, it, it, it stuff. It's just evolution of, of, mm. of stuff. You know, yeah. you, you you wear clothes and they just they fit you better with mm. time. You wear shoes that they're not degrading. They're mm. just evolving. Sure. And it's it's like anything. Like humans, we evolve. We don't degrade as we grow older. We <laughs> we do maybe some of us do. Some of us do. <laughs> depends how much what you do. But yeah, it's just it's an evolution versus a, a degradation or a or a control. We're not controlling the aging process. Mm. We're not trying to make things look. Old or artificially vintage aged. or yeah. any of that, you know. Mm. That's that's we leave that for the iPhones. Mm. You know, it's it's they, it's just stuff. Just happens the way it is. You know. Mm. And if we were able to get if we if we got these results with whatever other equipment, we'd use it. We don't care. Mm. There's no the Charles and I, you know, refuse any kind of purism. You know, mm. the, the the only purism we want is that we don't want purism. Mm. You know. <laughs> Well, that's, um, I mean, yeah, degradation, I guess, is a loaded term. But mm. I wonder if there's a, perhaps another way of looking at it could be in, in treating the materials, you kind of unlock 
dormant meaning in some respects. Like it's kind of you bring something out that's there, but which needs some kind mm. of like teasing out. Do you think that's uh, well, there's a um, to me, you know, there's the, the medium of film, the medium of 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 of, of uh, a projected film. Mm. Um, there's a certain history in that, and when I say history, I mean that uh, history is created with that because of the aging process of these things and, mm. and their existence. So the, there's the, the, the history of that is just kind of like, it takes its own path and, and you know, I, I, I don't want, don't care to like sort of like guide it or and like I just let it be on mm. its own. When we film something, we can film this cup and mm. we film it and it's a cup and when we take these images and we treat them, mm. we kind of don't really know what's going to happen. It's not right. like we're like, you know, like ninjas at this. We're mm. just like doing this and we don't know and there's a whole, there's a whole uh, part of it that's just random and from the randomness we have to create something that, that, mm. that we feel is beautiful to our eyes. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with the, with the music live, there's definitely very fixed parts to what's happening but a lot of it is just like, you know, I mean, you can tell from show to show depending how drunk we are, it can get really <laughs> funny sometimes because it's like, like, what were you thinking? This was so <laughs> stupid. And sometimes where it's just like, it's like, wow, it's really focused. It's great. But it's mm. just, I, I let that using, using like hybrid digital and analog stuff, the analog mm. stuff definitely has a life of its own. And yeah. my, my bazooka, the instrument I play, that has, I mean, it has nine lives of its own. It's just, it really just reacts so, so sensitive to the environment it's in. And it can just play so differently. It can be such a pain sometimes <laughs> and such a joy at other times, mm. uh, depending. Yeah, really. So it's all, all that stuff. It's just, you, you let these things have their own life and forge their own path. And you just, you, you, you let them guide you. They guide mm. you. We don't guide them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I guess that would apply also to the use of the human voice. The human voice being a essentially an, you know, an <laughs> absolutely. I mean, unpredictable instrument. Very times. unpredictable, and as you know, as much as you try, it's, it does its own thing. And another mm. thing that also evolves in a beautiful way. Mm. Uh, Abdul Karim's performance. Um, you know, he's been doing this for a very long time, and to mm. hear him sing the day before yesterday, you're like, just your voice, just his voice, just has evolved somewhere that's just. Absolutely mm. amazing. And if he was mm. trying to do this 30 years ago, it would have sounded silly because it's mm. just not you're forcing, you know, you're, yeah. you're taking an apple and you're ripening it in a, in, a, in, a, in a warehouse versus letting it ripen on a tree before you mm. can pluck it and eat it. Um, same thing for Alanis Elbum Sawin, who's performing later. It's yeah. like her voice, what it is today versus what it was in 1984 mm. versus what it was in 1969. It's mm. just, you know, it's, it's a beautiful, natural evolution of it. And Absolutely, just, yeah. You let it have its own life. Natural being the key here, nothing forced about nothing it. Nothing forced just about purely it, yeah. Yeah. Given its own time to become itself and then become sure. itself again. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And like yeah. for it to refine itself, it's this, this, it's not a reinvention of anything. Mm. It's just like, it just needs to find its bearings and exist. Mm. I mean, for yourself as a, as a performer, I mean, uh, obviously, like, as we say, you've, you've worked in bands and so forth. Do you think, um, are, would you class yourself as a natural performer? Is it, is the live environment something that you take to quite easily? In a, across a variety of different settings. I don't know if I take to it quite easily. I really, really freak out before a show. Yeah. I have been all my life. It's horrible. It's mm. like, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And I don't know what it is, but it, it really like a sequence of things need to happen. I get so, it's so silly, I know, but it gets superstitious and it yeah. has to happen in a certain order for me to feel right about it. Um, but it's, it's just like, um, uh, I, I don't know that I take well to the, I respect the live more than I respect the the the, the recorded, right. which is really ironic because I'm a record producer, but I <laughs> and, and I'm a record producer who doesn't really like live takes. Mm. I actually really dislike doing live off the floor takes with yeah. bands, and that's what I'm doing for my record. It's just, <laughs> the, 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 it's just one big ox, oxymoron what I do. <laughs> um, but I, I I I really do prefer I respect the live spectacle of things and, and when I say yeah. spectacle it's it's some people can complain about a show that happened at the festival where you couldn't see the performer and yeah. basically it was a laptop and I was like that is such a stupid and banal statement to say <laughs> like that that you need to see someone like go listen to Eddie Van Halen if yeah. that's what you want like that's just that's not what we're here for you know art is art we don't yeah. care if it's like if you have a ten thousand dollar modular synth or if you have a laptop or if you have your iPhone like yeah. it does not that's not the point you know yeah. it's just stuff stuff doesn't make art it's people yeah. make art um, but yeah, that to me, the live is really like, like very important as much as I struggle with it. I, mm. I of course, that's my, that's the thing I, I covet to play as close to a perfect show as I can. And I'm, I'm still miles and miles away. 
right, yeah. miles and miles away, unfortunately. <laughs> Do you think that, I mean, part of the point of it is that you may never attain that perfection? Attaining it would be a failure, right? Mm. Like, and that's, I think, what I learned from all these people who I consider masters at their, their, mm. their, their, uh, their craft is the people that like the, the idea that you are, we are ever-evolving creatures as people. Mm. And for these people who do this one task that they're ever-evolving and will never attain the supreme, mm. you are just always working towards it. And the mm. point is that you work towards it knowing you will never get to that, you know, to the apex of the mountain. It's just non-existent, doesn't sure. exist. You just have to believe that you are making your way towards it. Yeah, the striving is the point in itself. Of course, that's yeah. what keeps you alive and that's what keeps you, you know, keeps your evolution happening. Mm. Uh, you mentioned the, your work as a produ producer and uh, engineer. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how is that actually, does that make, I mean, it sounds like an obvious statement, but does that make producing the, your own records more difficult or actually does it present you with a, little, a few obstacles of its own? You'd be shocked at how little time I spend on my records. Mm. Like they happen within a day. Right. A day, two days. It's like in, out. This is the idea. I think about it for months and months and months and months. Right. And then just boom, this is the idea. This is, it's ripe. It's do it. This is me now, who I am, what I am. I yeah. will do this. And uh, what happens, happens. So, mm. um, so I don't spend a lot of time on that. I really separate the two. I'm, it's a very different thing for me. I can't record with people. It has to be on my own. I'm, right. I just yeah. can't do it with other people. Mm. The fact that people do it with me blows my mind. It's like, <laughs> like, I'm like and I, I try to relate and I can't because I'm like, I can't. I can never record with other people. Right. So recording with this orchestra is like making that. I, I say hard because it's it's. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. very dark I mean, it's kind of like the me. ultimate collaboration in a way. Yeah, it's like, collaboration and challenge. I'm really yeah. trying, going to try. I'm going to try to like push myself somewhere where like, it's not that I'm uncomfortable. It's like I'm extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and see what happens. It's an experiment. You know? yeah. <laughs> With that kind of recording process, I mean, the one that you're talking about now, I mean, how far into that are you, the new the new kind of thing. It is three weeks away. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and is this a lot, this presumably is a longer process than... The previous uh... uh well it's only two days so oh, okay. not really wow we're okay just, we're doing this in, it's one piece it's a 22 minute piece it's one side of a of, of a record yeah and yeah it's really straightforward i mean the piece is 22 minutes so when we do it it will have we will have spent 22 minutes doing it mm. full stop you know it's like that's <laughs> it so that's all there is and it'll be very easy to mix it it's just it will mix itself because it's all acoustic instruments and everybody is like listening to everybody mm. and you know we have a conductor and an arranger and we're all following. I'm not even like leading this. I'm just one of the performers. We're mm. all following the arranger who I've hired to arrange this. Mm. Well, I mean, um, going back to the live side of things, uh, mm. on Thursday, there was a kind of incident at the start or just mm. before you started. Uh, it was at the start, yeah. It was during actually because the projectors, yeah. the, the beginning of the shows, the projectors are everything you're hearing is ah. coming from the optical tracks of the films. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was. I mean, do you mind taking us through what kind of happened? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. Uh, you know, I heard it, but I didn't see anything. Well, you so. couldn't see any of it. That was the kind of the stupid thing about it. I mean, it was in the moment. You're like a little drunk, and you're a little like, like yeah. feeling like someone's just really provoking you, and yeah. it was just somebody that. I assume, I don't know, I don't know this person, mm. that certain degree of provocation maybe, I don't know. Yeah. But a uh, person who was closest to me, basically like, I don't know, a meter away from me at the edge of the stage was just waving a big Israeli flag in my face. Mm. And uh, I got on stage and this was happening and I was um, just decided to ignore it, you know? It's like this, that's giving space, time and space for these things I feel usually is like the worst thing to do. Mm. Uh, but you know, the Arab in me was like, well, I'm not going to back down. <laughs> and I basically told him to leave. I told yeah. him to just take that and leave. Like, fuck this flag. Mm. I uh, thankfully was not that fucked up that I was didn't insult the person because that's not what I would have wanted to do. Sure. Uh, just being like trying to illustrate to this person that if you're trying to provoke, well, mm. it worked. You provoked me. And then you yeah. want my attention, you have my attention now. Mm. And you're not going to like what I'm going to do. So you're going to have to leave. Consequences. Consequences, yeah. Don't yeah. be an idiot. And if it was a mistake... I don't know who carries a flag in their backpack <laughs> like to go to a show of somebody they don't know. It just yeah. like blows my mind. Like if you made a mistake, well, you're just an idiot and you shouldn't be here. It's yeah. like this is insane. Like that you think that this is appropriate behavior. If you waved a Lebanese flag, it would be inappropriate and I'd tell you to leave. Mm. Like let alone an Israeli flag, which mm. to me is very offensive yeah. for my own politics and sure. for, for justice and for, you know, everything that I believe in, what the project stands for and all that. Mm. It just seemed like it was... Uh, you're just an ass. Like, just yeah. leave, leave, stop being a macho dickhead. And yeah. leave, you know, like, nobody wants you here. I believe he did leave. Didn't he, he did leave. Yeah, what yeah. is he going to do? Not yeah, leave? exactly. Like, what is he going to do? Not after that. If he didn't leave, it would be like, 
kind of awesome in a way. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can have an ounce of respect for you maybe. Yeah. But now you're just like, I have no respect for you. Just go. <laughs> the fact that you're leaving, you're just a coward. Yeah. Not only are you an idiot for doing this, but you can't even stand up for you. You're just a coward on every level and an idiot mm. on every level. And it's just stupid. And it's terrible that you're making me be mean to you. Yeah. But you're being far meaner to me. And you're, just, you're asking for it. You asked for it. Mm. You asked for it. I mean, has that kind of thing happened before in the history um, of Jerusalem in my heart? There have been attempts uh, by a, uh, a, uh, a group in Montreal to shut down a show. They, they sort of called the, the venue, which was this big arts foundation that gets its funding from the government, and mm. they had threatened to file a racism file for the, just the booking of the project mm. and uh, citing anti-Semitism, which is, uh, you know, you can't get more ignorant than that, mm. that, that someone can call a Semite anti-Semitic. It's, Pretty ridiculous, but mm. um, it doesn't happen too often. The, the project, the natural evolution of the project is that it's in a milieu where people are either open to what a person has to say, agree or disagree, mm. or that people are unaware and therefore they just take it in for what it is mm. uh, without giving it uh, their own feedback or opinion because they just feel not equipped to do mm. so. And all that's great and fine. And, you know, we, we present our work to present our ideas and our point of view. And I don't care that somebody agrees or disagrees. It's not the point of it, the point mm. of its existence, you know? It, it is a problem when one person tries to, you know, step on someone else's, you know, uh, expression, freedom of expression, mm. liberty to express and stuff. Sure. Well, I mean, um, I'm guessing that because of the nature of the project, it's kind of a, a discourse can open up around what you do. And that's something that presumably you... Often, yeah. I mean, I think that's... The, like, let me just make it clear. Mm. I think waving a flag in your face is not the way to do it. No, that's... However... Oh, that's, yeah, that's just That's juvenile. a whole different it's thing. Juvenile. It's like, yeah. I just had a football match. It's like so yeah. ridiculous. But, um, you know, it's... it's we, you know, we've gotten approached by people from Tel Aviv who've invited us to come and play there. And mm. then, like, you know, the, the, the conversation that happens from that and be like, well, the fact that you're even inviting me you already are telling me you have no idea what I do. You're just, mm. you're just being, I don't know what you're reading or what you're seeing about this, but mm. uh, something tells me you're really missing the point, which right. already turns me off and the yeah. idea of working with you is pointless. Like, yeah. This is pointless. You really don't get what this is. Mm. You have no idea who I am. You don't even understand that I can't legally go there. Like mm. it's, it's that absurd. Like mm. I legally do not have the right to go there. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, yeah, well, it is, it is, it is what it is. And, you know, it's... it's I, it's so hard to talk about. It's a big, heated mm. discussion and debate, and you know, I'm always open to discussing and talking about it with anybody. And it's a delicate one because as as we evolve with with time and music and culture and arts, and we've sort of you know the the, the we've we've succeeded in 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 uh, dismantling uh, the idea of what racism really is, mm. and the idea that uh, coexistence is something that we should strive for, which we should, of mm. course. Yeah. But uh, manipulated coexistence is, is, is wrong. Mm. And, you know, apartheid is apartheid. When, when, when apartheid was, was, was broken up in South Africa, everybody looked back and said, boy, was I a fucking idiot for playing that, for mm. being there and doing that. And mm. it's, to me, it's the exact same thing that's happening. And I see everybody around us in the milieu who are just oblivious, just completely oblivious and ignorant and, mm. and choose to do it. And like, if that's your position, that's fine. Mm. But then don't be offended when you're called oblivious and ignorant. Mm. Yeah, it's like, because that's, that's fact. That's, yeah. that's fact. It's not fiction. Mm. And then, you know, but then, you know, people are armed with all sorts of arguments why that's, that's right, you know. And I stand for the cultural boycott of that. So mm. it's pretty, pretty, pretty direct and pretty clear. There's no, there's no gray area for me in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and a big part of the project is that the, the, the back of the record is very much the image of what apartheid is, very mm. much the image of death, murder, and abuse, violence. It's, it's just that presented in one simple picture taken by a Westerner, you know, mm. um, of, 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 you know, what we, what we deem as news, what we think is news, and what is news, what is fact, and what we think is fact, you know. Mm. It's, it's all these things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with, um, with Jerusalem in my heart, I think, do you... Do you think there are some people, because my thoughts on that particular incident the other night was that there, was, there were kind of almost two options. Like one, it was someone deliberately trying to provoke you, or B, there was someone who just had completely missed the point altogether. Either of them, both of them are kind of Ridiculous. pretty poor, you know, it's kind of like... For uh, like a, you know, well, can't say it's a fringe festival anymore, but it's not popular culture festival. Mm. This is not, you know, this is no top 
20, top 50, top 100 music. Mm. It's like, you know, it's pretty fringe. It's small. It's a tiny festival, yeah. given what the state of music festivals is these days in mm. Europe, you know? So, yeah, for somebody to have, it just, you can't help but feel somebody really came here with that intention. Your mm. intention was to come. You went home, took that flag, put it in your bag, yeah. brought it in, and just you had an intention. There was mm. evil in your head. and. Mm. Or if it wasn't evil, there was just ignorance in your head. I like, was nothing in your head. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, it's just, what, not a hell of a lot better, really. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's just it's silly, and I feel sure. definitely bad for like you know the the mean the meanness was really hard. The 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 mm. the, the aggressiveness, the aggression that came out mm. was is, is the, the the animal in you that comes out. I don't like that. I definitely don't like that. But it just was mm. like you're 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 eating away at me, and you're choking me. This mm. is a space that I'm given. I'm yeah. lucky to be here. I'm so fortunate. Mm. Um, like, stand outside with your flag and wave a sign. I don't know why you're doing it. You know, on my time, mm. it's ridiculous. I mean, do you think with the uh, with the sort of with the motivations beyond the project and the kind of the the interests and the you know the opposing of oppression, essentially, is other stakes higher at the moment for you as an as a sort of international artist, or is that kind of illusory as well? <laughs> I don't know if the stakes are higher to me. It's like this, you know, for, I'm Lebanese. For us, we've, I've only known this since I was mm. born. I, I don't know anything else. You know, sure. I was born when the civil war started in Lebanon and we had to like refugees run, yeah. run and it's happened a few times to my family. So it's like, mm. yeah, that to us is, that's just life. That's, mm. that's what we know. So it's not like uh, now more than ever. Well, mm. actually now more than ever has been 42 years for me. So, right. so and probably will be for another 42 years. And after I'm gone, I, I, you mm. know, I don't know. I, I, I think it will remain. Mm. I hope not, but I know that, you know, it's the, the way things are, it will be. So yeah, I, I don't think that there's that, that doesn't change. That's only, that's perspective. It's like the person who says like, the world is such a violent place. It's more violent than it ever has been, but that's just your perception because yeah. the fact is it's not. It's more peaceful than it's ever been, which is absurd. Mm. It's just your perception, what you know is news, what you think is mm. news, what is fact and what you think is fact and all these things and how they get manipulated and how they get uh, explained, what your own filters are, what mm. your own you know, sense of equality and inequality mm. is. Um, and all that. I mean, we were at rehearsal day with Alanis and she was talking about, you know, the dehumanization of, of, of an indigenous people in Canada. And mm. it's, it's just so hard to sit there and listen to because there's someone who understands and has struggled all her life with the understanding that, like, the only way these things exist is for one person to tell their people that this other person is actually not a human. Mm. He's actually an animal, not a human being. Mm. He's half the human you are, which justifies war and death and violence and killing and oppression and all that bullshit. So mm. it's, 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 you know, it's something we're so easily capable of as people. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to your, wait, you're based in Montreal, obviously. Based is in Montreal, yeah. yeah. I, I spent quite a bit of time. My family's all in Lebanon and so uh, Sorry, I missed... My family lives all in Beirut, Lebanon, yeah, so I'm there yeah. quite, quite, quite... I'm just wondering, bit. like, for the project and, well, just for... How have you found Montreal in terms of being a supportive environment for creativity? Well, Montreal is, like, very unique. Mm. It's um, unique within the, the, the ocean that is Canada that it's in. Mm. It has nothing to do with the country. It's so bizarre. It's, mm. it's a tiny little city that is so dysfunctional. It is so ridiculous, mm. um, which makes it so charming and amazing. Uh, and, you know, within that little island, literally an island, uh, within that island in this country, mm. uh, there are other little islands, smaller islands, mm. And uh, within those small islands, there are smaller islands, and I find myself in one of you know the most beautiful islands with uh, the people who are around me, the, the the network that I'm in, the friends that I have, mm. and the friends that you're continuously making. It's just an environment that it's it's so easy for you to do what you want to do and to have a a a, a very um, you know a life that you are happy with there. Mm. It's very safe, and I recognize how lucky I am to be there, uh, especially because like it's. it's the, 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 the unlucky is very close to me. It's very close to home, yeah. right? It's right there. I see mm. it. Uh, and I'm in it when I'm not in Montreal, in Lebanon. Um, so when I go back, it's always like, you're like, okay, you have to really appreciate what you have and mm. not take it for granted. Like, we're just so lucky. We, so lucky we have water we can drink out of a faucet. Mm. We're so lucky we can flick, like, flick a switch and the light comes on. You yeah. know? Or that you're not going to die. <laughs> you know? So... Well, kind of, uh, I definitely wanted to talk about uh, your role as a curator for this mm -hmm. festival. 
which I know, like speaking for myself, some of my favorite acts have been assembled here by yourself. So Thank you. thanks for that. Very, very, uh, very touched to hear that. It's, I just wanted uh, to kind of like, um, I'm really interested in the process of curation. I mean, what kind of criteria did you have for the selection of particular artists? Was it purely these guys are great or was that, were they kind of expressing something or working in a way that was kind of broadly sympathetic with the way that you work? I mean, these artists are all great. That goes without saying, in my opinion. It's mm. all music I like. It's not, sure. I obviously wouldn't program anything I don't like. Um, the festival really gave a carte blanche to do whatever. Mm. They were like, just throw, throw out a list of names. Uh, the list was really big and a lot of it just couldn't happen because mm. a lot of it was very difficult. I mean, a lot of people to get them here was a lot, a lot, a lot of work. So mm. I'm quite, quite proud and happy that they've made it. They, they, they are here and uh, everybody will perform, <laughs> <laughs> which was not sure for a while. Um, but no, I mean, um, they all do represent, uh, let me just, before I say that, make sure that that's right. Yeah, I can say that. They all 100% represent uh, a, a represent something to me that I feel needs to be given a place on a stage mm. uh, and people's ears and eyes uh, because what they've said and done has been so important either in the past mm. or in the present or, you know, in the future. Like mm. that, that you can project and be like, what you are doing is going to be so important culturally to what's mm. happening and um, who you represent, what you represent is, uh, falls very much in line with my politics. Mm. And, uh, and for me, politics and art is the same. It's, mm. it's, it, it's all the same. Everything, politics, art, food, everything, water, it's, everything is politics. Yeah. And anybody who doesn't think so, I feel is, is, that's a shame because mm. it all is very much connected. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, the, I mean, yeah, I draw my own, you know, I connect my own dots between these people. I, I, yeah. I don't think a lot of them probably don't know each other or know their art, their, their other people's art, but um, yeah. Mm. I mean, one thing that I found quite interesting about this, uh, this particular set of artists and also yourself and also something that's happening maybe on a, on a wider scale throughout the world is this kind of, um, there seems to be a loose network, musical and artistic network mm -hmm. of resistance. And it seems to be, it, perhaps it's always existed, but it just seems to be very much coming to the fore almost aggressively at the moment with acts like, I mean, I would include in people like, uh, like More Mother, Klein, I would kind of in include yourselves in that. I mean, do you do you see that as something that's kind of do you have you noticed something kind of? I mean, I was going to say cohering, but it can't mm -hmm. cohere in a way because it's so scattered. Different. It's, yeah. Um, you know, I, I I don't. That's a very difficult thing to even think about because it's mm. like we all have our own struggles. Like mm. you know, but every person you know, struggles and nobody doesn't, that's like our existence is being born is a struggle sure. as a human being. And as we grow up and as we live our experiences, we all struggle in our own way. Um, so struggle can come from like, you know, a, a uh, many different places. And if it is, you know, politics, mm. if you want to use that very broad term for certain people, well, you know, that that's, that's very, it's a very clear and obvious reason and mm. message and, and, and content behind it. But someone can be like, you know, like Farida playing last night. Mm. Obviously, there's no politics in the sense that what she presents is like deep, beautiful love songs. Mm. But within playing with and by the fourth line, she said something that was so touching and political without mm. it really being political. Where mm. she salutes the people of Kurdistan, mm. like we are in Utrecht. And here you are making a statement that, mm. you know, uh, only the Arab, Arabic speakers in the room caught that, of course. Mm. And you're like, yeah, well, that's, that's politics right there. And that's your struggle. That's it. You're saying it. You're Iraqi. You are saying it right mm. there. Um, if that's her intention or isn't, I don't know, but she did say it. Mm. So it's, 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 you know, it, 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 I think all these artists, just, they just exist and they do what they do. Mm. And if, if the, their struggle is very much the reason why they make art, well, that's great. And if it's not, and it's just, you know, uh, a coincidence that that comes through what they do mm. and that's amazing too it's mm. I, I don't think of that that way i, I mean mm. I, I can see uh yeah we all struggle and it all come, manifests itself in very different ways with very mm. di with different people mm. and it seems to also kind of coincide with something we were discussing uh, a moment ago about struggling to actually define oneself mm -hmm. as a creative voice of course uh, of course that's very difficult and that's mm. that's what makes everybody performing at this festival is so interesting. Mm. And 
equally, that's what makes all the people attending, right? Because mm. that's a, your struggle for you is to come and like identify with what it is that's happening. Because when you go to a show, you're sitting there and you're just opening yourself up to be like, give me, I want, mm. you know, and I want to take it in and I'm going to let it influence me. Whether you want it to or not, it's going to influence you. I influenced this fellow who had this mm. flag, whether he likes that or not, whether mm. he wanted it to, just like he influenced me. Yeah. We all influence each other. We're all infectious yeah. creatures, right? We, Absolutely. We, our brains touch each other's brains, whether we want it to or not. Yeah. And every bit of, uh, I was talking to this to, um, to someone the other day about the idea of like information entering the brain as kind of software. Mm -hmm. And like whenever you download a new piece of software to your PC or your Mac or whatever, it, you always get that question that comes up, this will alter your uh, programming sure, system. Yeah. And it's sure a similar <laughs> sort of thing with every, <laughs> yeah. every input, really. Sure, absolutely. It's all, you know, it's all, it's all experience. It's all, you know, we're taking it in the brain it's like it's, mm. you know it's, it's, it's a net catching all these things mm -hmm. and sometimes they get through the net and sometimes it doesn't <laughs> i mean regarding the uh the curation mm -hmm. um just wondering are you able to i don't know maybe you would would you be willing to mention some of the acts you weren't able to get hold of that would be interesting uh, i think whoa it's been so long uh, we've been working <laughs> on this for a long time i have to tell you um hmm. oh my god well, one that comes to mind is this uh, trio of three sisters from, mm. uh, from Khartoum in Sudan mm -hmm. called Al Balabel, the Sparrows, oh. who are a just, you know, I know they're still around. I know they still perform. Mm. And I just couldn't quite reach them. Right. It was really difficult. We tried through so many people and it just was just too hard. Mm. And that didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really can't remember. My God. Uh, we tried to get my the the one of the biggest influences on me in music. His name is Matara Muhammad, who's a, a deceased bazook player, mm -hmm. instrument that I play, and you know he's just the godfather of the instrument and a completely forgotten and uncredited genius and uh, uh, creator who has composed many songs for extremely famous people in right. Lebanese music, but gets no credit because he is a uh, uh, you know. We say this in Lebanon, even though it's a really like difficult word to say, but he's a gypsy. Mm. That's that's the term. That's that's how you know that those people refer to themselves as gypsy. Mm. And uh, yeah, and seeing as he was illiterate, also he just got no credit and no money and died, of course, mm. extremely poor. Made uh, a handful of records. Uh, some of them are just absolute genius. Um, and his son, mm. who still plays and plays bazook, and. Uh, just couldn't get him. He just refused. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, now it's coming back. A person who I admire, who uh, I ran into, a master, uh, someone I can call a master. Mm -hmm. His name is Hassan Haffar. Mm -hmm. He's from Aleppo in Syria. And uh, I was in Aleppo, like, you know, a minute before the war started there. I, like, mm -hmm. left and shit hit the fan, literally. Right. Um, and uh, I tried, the con phone conversation with him was hilarious because I had to really dig deep until I found somebody who had his phone number, right. called him up, and he was so spooked by who, what I even was proposing. And he was just like, <laughs> just immediately thought it like it was, you know, secret services or something. And oh he was my like, God. bye, click. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I have enough money, I don't want this. <laughs> I was like, no, no, you don't understand. And he was like, no, no, I love, I love, Hang up. He, just, <laughs> oh. he like ran away. He was like, "Don't, don't leave me alone, please." <laughs> um, and he's just an absolute. He, he, he's a. Uh, he, he's just does these uh, Aleppo chants, mm -hmm. um, and not too dissimilar from what Abdul Karim does ah. in a very different way, but still in that same style of, mm. of, of you know, Levantine singing. It's really interesting. Sorry to sort of interject, mm -hmm. but really interesting the. Um, contacting artists who exist outside of the conventional frameworks. Yeah, well, because a lot of, I mean, usually what it is is you just give them to Bob at the festival and they just do their homework and they find sure. those people and, they, and then you're done. But with me, it was a lot of work because it was a lot of people that I had to personally contact and I had to personally, you know, do all the, the, the dealings, which I don't do. I don't know how to do that. It's yeah. not my job. I've never done it. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my God, this is really not fun. I, I don't like this at all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was a lot of work, but well worth it. Well yeah, worth it. absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, the, the lineup speaks for itself and the performance speak for themselves as well. Thank you. Um, are, you, uh, do you are you coming away from it with a sense of it's been a successful kind of process for you and for the festival? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And so far, just 
Last night we had a DJ night with two fellows who I'd never met, mm. but I've just been following their podcast for a few years. Uh, yeah. They're called the Tukadim Vinyl. They're two guys from France who are uh, North African mm. and they are just vinyl, just vinyl collectors. They're both social workers. Yeah. And they collect uh, vinyl and they DJ vinyl only set um, of these. And I was there drooling over the record collection. I was like, oh, it's just so difficult to look at this. <laughs> um, but uh, at that party, the amount of people that came up and were like so excited about them having DJed and then the Turkish friends and the Lebanese friends who got up on the decks and mm-hmm. spun some music and it just was a party and people were like, people I don't know were just randomly coming up and saying how, how much they appreciate the experience and how, how happy and excited they are to hear so much stuff they didn't know. And <laughs> so that's, of course, how can I not be so emotionally touched by it? Yeah, it's like, of course. It's so rewarding. It's <laughs> not my intention. It's just, I just do this is what I do. I don't know, you know. <laughs> I don't have any like you know curator. I've never done this before. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's not my thing. You know. Is there uh, is there anything in particular? I mean, I don't know if you've had the chance, but is there anything in particular outside of your own curations that you've seen that you've been wow, that was oh, incredible. I mean, it's been so hard to find time because of the rehearsals that have accompanied sure. these shows uh, to find time to actually experience the festival, which sucks. But that's yeah. just part of it. If I want people to experience these 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 curated artists at their best, I have to do that job. Yeah. And that's fine. I did watch, uh, which was a dream of mine, to see Farrah Sanders. I've never been able to see him. Same, and, yeah. You know, I would have uh, paid whatever the price of the pass was just to see him walk around that drum set yeah. 20 <laughs> times. Just that, no playing. That would have been enough for me. I have Absolutely. such just, you know, massive respect for him and mm. I adore him so much. And it was just so beautiful to see that. Um, so I met Fakrun, which was great because that was, uh, you know, I had nothing to do with that. And, mm. you know, hats off to the festival for making that happen mm. and for Fitz for, you know, masterminding that. He's so great. That was awesome. Mm. He's, you know, I, I love his music so much and I got to meet him. He needed a pick <laughs> and I had a pick. Oh my God. <laughs> and that's how we met. And I told him, I was like, by the way, I'm a real big fan. This is a real <laughs> fanboy moment here. It's not just meeting, but actually assisting. Yeah, just giving him this pick. And he was just like, oh, it's so sweet of you. And then he, you know, it's like, oh, what's the name of your project? I'll check it out. And I was like, oh, I, I know you want, but that's really sweet. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah, um, it was great. I think now might be an interesting time to maybe open up the floor and see if anyone has any oh, questions, yes, if you're interested. Yes, the, the, uh, does the anyone, part. <laughs> any questions out there? Hello. Is that a question I see? Somebody moved. Ah, think of one now. No, okay. I think that's a no. It was the same with the last one. You're shy. Well, not, I wouldn't ask a question if I was sitting there. <laughs> you can ask them a question if you like. Uh, I have no questions. Though. Okay. Anyone got a drink for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that will be sorted out. Sorry. No, no, I'm okay. I don't drink beer, actually. <laughs> that, that was great. Uh, that's, that's good, that was... Thank you. It's very, it's very touching. <laughs> uh, I don't drink beer, sadly. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, that's great. Thank you for talking to thank me. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for Red sitting Run. here and listening to Thank you very me. much. Blah, blah, blah. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was great.